Today in the news, Windows 11 has another problem, and Valve is doing something pretty good for their customers. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Microsoft. Last week, we received news that Microsoft's latest OS, Windows 11, could hurt your gaming performance by as much as 35 plus percent. But that was only for very specific systems. It only happens on OEM built PCs that come from the likes of HP and Dell, and only on the ones that are shipped with Windows 11. If they upgraded, then it's perfectly fine. That's because they have a security system called VBS that impacts the CPU and memory performance in games. Thankfully, VBS can be disabled, so keep that in mind if someone you know is planning on uh, buying a gaming PC with Windows 11 from one of these companies. So why am I bringing this up? We talked about this last Friday. Well, it turns out that Windows 11 has another issue that could cause even more performance hits. This time, specifically for all Windows 11 compatible AMD processors. That includes all Ryzen 3000 processors and up, so that's Zen 2 and Zen 3. So how does it impact Windows 11's gaming performance? Well, as noted by AMD, thank you AMD for at least being transparent about this, according to the support pages, the latency of the L3 cache can be slowed by as much as three times by Windows 11. The impact of this slowdown? Well, first, apps that are memory sensitive will experience slower access times. The second thing is an expected performance decrease in the range of three to 5% in some applications. And lastly, in what is probably most relevant to you, you could see a 15% hit in what AMD calls games commonly used for esports. Since this is a CPU issue, it probably means that the lower the resolution, for example, if you were to run CSGO at 720p for the max amount of FPS, well, the lower the resolution, the bigger the impact on performance. I don't think it's a game related issue. I really think that it will just depend on the resolution. That is something to test. There was also another issue found with AMD processors and Windows 11. This problem though is called by AMD's core management interface, AKA the Collaborative Power and Performance Control 2, also known as CPPC2. This is sort of an interface that sits between your hardware code, so that's the UEFI BIOS and the AGISA, and the operating system. That's of course Windows 11. What it does is pretty simple. It relays as much information as it can from the chip to the OS about the status of the cores, at what frequency they're running, what what kind of power level the cores are at, etc., etc., And then the OS itself will schedule the tasks for the appropriate cores. With this CPPC2 malfunctioning, applications and games that are single threaded or that use a few threads might see a performance hit. According to AMD, this will have a greater impact on CPUs that have more than eight cores and that have a TDP of over 65 watts. So RIP 3900X and up and 5900X and up. That's a lot of problems, which is again, proof that you shouldn't be upgrading to something just because it's new and shiny, AKA Windows 11. It's still got a lot of stuff to get worked out. Let's let the uh, adventurous peoples flesh out the problems for us. Damn. Thinking about it, I wouldn't want to be the guy who bought an OEM gaming PC pre-built with a 5900X and Windows 11, and I bought it for games. That's like 35% plus 50, that's, that's a lot of percent down on my performance. What the hell? Thankfully, AMD and Microsoft are hard at work to try and work out those two big issues with the cache and core control with a patch that should get released by the end of this month, October. The other issue though is uh, VBS and that unfortunately affects both Intel and AMD and that one doesn't have a patch yet and it doesn't seem like Microsoft wants to release one because VBS is a security feature and uh, you know, they just want it enabled everywhere. So what do you guys think? Let me know down below. Next up, we got Valve in the news, and wow, are they the good guys right now. I mean, it's insane. They released a video showing a basic how-to guide to get into the Steam Deck and how to replace the components. Components such as the thumbsticks and of course, the SSD. Now, while the man with the smooth voice explains you how to do everything, he makes sure to explain exactly why you shouldn't do it. Things like how the screws are self-tapping, so the structural integrity of the Steam Deck is immediately compromised 
advised the, the moment that you remove all of the screws and how a torque wrench should be used instead of a regular screwdriver. And he also explains how the SSD was chosen specifically to uh, not interfere with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. A curious design choice, in my opinion, is the fact that some of the screws for the shielding are also screws that hold down the APU's heatsink. So it might impact thermal performance. At least it looks like there's only one screw left if you want to repaste the APU, so it should be quick and easy. Despite the warnings to not do this though, they still go through it step by step for you to be able to execute the swaps without breaking anything. And they even managed to make a clever joke at the end. Remember, if you have followed these directions correctly, you've done absolutely none of the preceding steps. So what do you guys think about this move from Val? I think it's pretty cool. Let me know down below. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click on the end cards on my right once they appear. Uh, up here is going to be the latest video and down here the subscribe button. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Rolling them dices, I love it, I love it, I'm fine. Canvas for faces, I'm painting these pictures of mine. Rolling them dices, I love it, I love it, I'm fine.